We are with Representative Tina Orwell with the 33rd District. How are you doing? Hi, good, thank you. So we're almost at the half point of this mm -hmm. session. And last week, there were several education bills on the floor. Can you talk a little bit about what was passed last week? Well, as you know, our paramount duty is education. And there's some very important steps we need to take as we're moving towards fully funding education. And so some of the work we've been looking at is teacher shortage. And I know in the Highline School District, they had a 20% vacancy rate. And us, the districts throughout the state are struggling with this issue. So there's steps we're taking to address that. There's other work we're doing around levies and testing. We have um, one of the states that has high stakes testing. and We're looking at alternatives. And again, that's helping every kid have a path to be successful. And really, I feel like a lot of the bills I'm working on this session are about that. Let's talk a little about Opportunity Gap. What, what is it and what are we doing? Well, there's a comprehensive bill that's been worked on for several years. You know, when you look at graduation rates, they're not the same for all students. Students of color, low-income students, often have much lower graduation rates. We don't want to see opportunity gaps for any kid. We want every kid to be successful. And so there's a whole committee that's looked at what are the things we need to do. It could be around discipline approaches, around supports to students, a number of steps that we need to take, again, for every kid to be successful. And this brings me to a couple of your bills. Um, one of them is uh, keeping kids in school. Yes. Well, you know, we know that one of the top predictors of a kid not graduation, graduating from high school is their attendance in elementary school and that we need early interventions. One, we need parents to understand why coming to school is so important. We need to educate and we need interventions for students and families that might be struggling in those younger years. And so we want to bring supports for those families. We also look at the truancy issue when kids are missing a lot of school and what are the best ways to really look at the underlying issues. What's going on for that kid and that family? And so we're looking at these um, therapeutic truancy boards and bringing together both the schools and the courts in a cooperative way to support students. Uh, again, you know, I think our hope is that we'll, we'll get uh, access to treatment, access to academic supports, and things to help that, that student. And so this is also, you have another bill about um, special needs students. Yes. Transitioning. Talk to us about that. Transitions can be hard for all students, but they can be a, especially difficult for students with special needs. Um, I have a son who was on an IEP and 504 plan, and again, you know, taking those next steps are really important. Uh, one example on the 504 plan is we focus on what accommodations need to happen within the high school, but sometimes we don't plan for the next steps. For those kids going on to community college or to four-year schools, there's a lot of services that can help them in that next step, and we need to meet, to have the families meet to figure out what the best plan is for them. And lastly, another issue that is um, very high on your priority list, um, school sexual abuse plans. You know, we've done a lot of work in the education committee around making schools safe. Um, we've looked around suicide prevention and other issues, and this year we're really looking at the issue of sexual abuse. Um, teachers, and not everybody realizes this, are mandatory reporters. If there's any times they suspect any abuse of any student, um, they need to be able to report that. And we need plans in place of what steps they've taken uh, and what to do if abuse happens. Sadly, sometimes teachers um, have inappropriate conduct um, with students. And again, schools need to know what action to take and they need to be trained in these areas. So it really is to try to strengthen the safety plans in schools to, to prevent these kind of activities and if they happen to know how to handle them. All right, well, thank you very much and we'll see you next time. Thank you.